There are a lot of videos and articles out there about aircraft ownership and what to expect when owning an airplane and how to buy your first aircraft. And I've owned this little airplane for a little bit over a year and a half and before then I watched all these videos and read all these articles about how to buy an airplane and how to take care of it and only after owning the airplane I learned that there are a lot of aspects that aren't really covered in those videos and articles. So in this video I'm going to try and tell you the truth about aircraft ownership and what to expect when you buy your first First airplane. Hello everyone, my name is Pedro. This is the Florida Flying Channel and this little beauty right here is my beloved Vans RV-12 experimental home-built airplane. Let's get into the truth about aircraft ownership. Okay, the first thing that people should know about owning an airplane is that it is a full-on lifestyle. There is a huge time requirement to owning an airplane. There is definitely a monetary requirement to owning an airplane. You know, there are ways to keep the cost low and if you want to know about that you can check out my other video how to actually afford an airplane but it's something that's going to take a lot of your time in life keeping care of the aircraft the other thing that people need to understand about aircraft ownership is that it's not like owning a car it's not like owning a boat or any type of other recreational vehicle so let's get into the responsibilities for owning an aircraft when you buy an airplane the most important thing the owner needs to keep track of are all the maintenance items of course you know making sure that the aircraft is airworthy and in good flying condition and with that comes a lot of paperwork so this aircraft has three logbooks. It has one for the propeller, one for the engine, and one for the airframe. So every year you have to do a very thorough inspection of the aircraft, making sure that the airframe is in good working order, making sure that the engine is in good working order, you know, taking compression readings on the pistons, making sure that the oil changes are all up to date. So there's a lot of paperwork and every time you do some maintenance like that, you have to log it in the logbook. And a lot of these maintenance items can pop up very quickly. Owning an airplane is kind of like owning an animal because you have to take constant care of the aircraft. Now, the absolute worst thing you can do to an airplane is let it sit. Now, once you buy an airplane, you have to make sure that you're constantly dedicating time to take the airplane out for a flight or at least running the engine every now and then. In Florida, we have a pretty unique issue with uh, salty air since we all live by the ocean. If you run an airplane here in Florida and then you let it sit for an extended period of time, all that moist, salty air is just gonna sit in the engine and start to corrode it on the inside. The only way to combat that is to run the engine often. And I'm not talking about just running it on the ground idling. I'm talking about taking it up for a flight, full RPM, getting the temperatures up so that it evaporates all that salty air and cleans out the engine. Once you purchase the airplane, there is a constant mental pull to go and fly. So I try to fly at the very least every two weeks. And yeah, I've gone a month without flying and it just starts to <laughs> make me nervous about the airplane. All that time that you spent away from the aircraft, you start thinking about it all the time. You know, you're always going to have this thing in the back of your mind saying, hey, I really should go flying. I really got to fly my plane. It's been sitting for two weeks. It's not good for the aircraft. You have to be willing to dive into that lifestyle once you buy your first airplane. Okay, so not only is it a huge responsibility to make sure that the aircraft is in working order, that all the logbooks are straight, but it is a very big responsibility on the pilot who flies the airplane. As the pilot and the owner of this airplane, I have to make sure that I am in good working order to fly the aircraft. You know, I have to make sure that I am current. If I'm taking passengers, I have to fly every 90 days, three takeoffs and landings, you know the whole deal. I have to do my flight review, instrument proficiency check, and all that good stuff. That goes into the same kind of category is having a constant mental pool to make sure you're well enough to fly the aircraft. If you want to get into aircraft ownership, you have to be willing to dedicate all that time, not only on the airplane, but on yourself to make sure you are current for flying the aircraft. Now, these are some things that all these articles don't talk about. You know, they only talk about maintenance costs, things like that, things like hangar costs. But I really want to stress that, you know, once you buy an airplane, it's going to be on your mind a lot. Okay, so another thing about aircraft ownership which is starting to become kind of a big issue in the world of general aviation are insurance costs. By law, you don't have to insure your airplane like you would a car. However, it's a very, very good idea at least to get liability insurance. Insurance costs in general aviation are rising like crazy. And there are a lot of aircraft out there that you may not be able to get insured on. In another video, I talked about amphibious airplanes like the Sea Ray and the Aventura. 
before buying this airplane, I wanted to own one of those and I got a quote for insurance. You know, me as at the time a relatively low time pilot, they quoted me about $6,000 a year to insure that airplane. I went with a more standard type aircraft, you know, with a fixed landing gear, tricycle, easy to fly, very basic design. And for this airplane, I pay about $1,400 a year to get the whole aircraft insured and also with liability insurance. So when you want to buy an airplane, make sure you look at the insurance costs because that can add up quick. Again, you're not legally required to insure the aircraft, but it's obviously a very good idea to do so. And at the very least, get liability insurance because if you cause damage to people or property with your aircraft, you are on the hook for all that cost. Yeah, in general aviation, insurance rates are going up like crazy and there are just some airplanes out there that are completely uninsurable and you have to have a lot of time in the aircraft to actually be considered to be insured by the insurance company. Okay, another thing I learned about aircraft ownership that I didn't really think about before is that no airplane is perfect. Even brand new airplanes come with their little issues that have to be addressed. Now, this airplane looks really great in pictures and videos, but of course there are some little things that I want to address. There's always some little maintenance items, little scratches here and there that kind of weigh on you. And as a new aircraft owner, you have to be willing to either address them and spend all the money to make sure it's as close to perfection as possible, or be willing to live with the little minor imperfections. You know, nothing that makes the airplane unairworthy, but you know, it's still not a perfect aircraft and every single airplane that you're going to buy is going to have some type of issue. For example, I know someone who bought a brand new aircraft straight from the factory and they already have some maintenance items that need to be addressed. Even with brand new airplanes, there are things that just go wrong. And if you have a perfect airplane, I want to hear about it because I don't think they exist. Okay, so here's another thing I want to talk about real quick on aircraft ownership. So basically, there are two main types of aircraft that people are going to consider when they buy their first airplane. There are the certified aircraft like the Cessnas, the Pipers, Beechcraft, Diamond, Cirrus, things like that. And all those airplanes are factory built, uh, delivered from the factory and deemed safe enough to use for hire. And then there are experimental airplanes like this one that all come in either kits or plans built. I thought that experimental aviation was the way to go because there's a lot more freedom. You know, I can upgrade the panel, do some little minor changes here and there, and it's totally legal and I can do it myself, which I thought was great. However, one thing that I didn't realize after buying an experimental airplane is that there are a lot of maintenance shops that refuse entirely to work on experimental aircraft. To them, it's a lot of added liability, and I totally understand that. So if you're gonna go with an experimental airplane like this one, as the owner, you have to be willing to either work on the airplane yourself or spend some time looking for an AMP who's willing to work on it. You know, if I ever come to the time in my life where I can't work on the airplane, I understand that some shops will not work on it. Another thing that a lot of videos and articles do cover are the costs behind owning an airplane. And every year it seems like these costs are going up dramatically. For example, if you own an airplane, you have to know where to park it. At this airport, tie downs are about $50 a month, but a hangar like this one, which is privately owned by a major company, which I will not name, uh, they're charging over $500 a month for the hangar itself, which I think is a little expensive. Whether or not you need a hangar is very dependent on the type of aircraft that you purchase. Personally, I think that the RV-12 is not a good airplane to keep outside because the canopy itself isn't very watertight. Yes, I do have a great sun cover for it if I have to park it outside, but if it sits outside for an extended period of time, it's just going to get completely beat up. You know, seals around the wing roots aren't perfect and water is going to start to get inside. So if you want to buy an airplane, make sure it's one that either you can afford a hangar for or is it an airplane that does well outside in the the sun and the rain. I thought that I'd be pretty okay with keeping the aircraft outside if I had to, but in reality, every time it's outside, even with the sun cover tied down and everything secured, I just start to die a little bit inside. It's raining and windy on this poor little airframe. So that's one thing I didn't really fully understand. And 
Even when I take it on trips, I start to worry about the airplane sitting outside for a long time. So something to consider if you are buying an aircraft, you know, are you okay with having to keep it outside if you have to? So a lot of people who want to buy an airplane, maybe like, oh, I like to fly every now and then. I think it would be cool to own an airplane. Really, you should go into it knowing that this is something that you absolutely love to be willing to spend all the time, money and energy on the aircraft. So I would recommend buying an airplane for someone who loves aviation. You know, it's their heart and soul. I think that covers really most of the things that I learned about aircraft ownership. Let me know what you think. Maybe drop a comment or a question below. Make sure to subscribe to the Florida Flying channel. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. I'm planning on releasing some more flying videos, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching. Blue skies, and I'll see you on the next flight.